Good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. Welcome to another Our Success Podcast. We have Devin on with us as a guest. Devin, thank you so very much for willing to spend some of your morning with us and actually share your knowledge with us. Thanks for having me, man. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. So, Devin, I brought you in because I know you as a business strategist, and I want you to talk about business strategies. As you probably know better than everybody else, too, everything is upside down, man, right now. Everything is shifting. Everything is changing. The way people consume, the way people talk to each other, communication, businesses are going down, and some of the businesses that I happen to be talking to recently, they're actually flourishing. A business I was talking to yesterday is up 50% since January alone, and they're actually a pretty decent sized company, right? So I'm curious, what are you guys doing internally? What are you seeing in, out in the market? Let's kind of set, set up the synopsis of what the problem is and what you're seeing, and then we'll get to the solution then. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so it's interesting, working in all industries with clients of all sizes, I see the same. So I have a number of clients being really impacted. Mm -hmm. um, those are your retail locations, your restaurants, um, vacation, hospitality. The other side of that that I think is worth noting is the people who serve those industries. So I have a couple mm -hmm. marketing agency clients whose primary book of business was um, travel. Mm -hmm. And it was a great industry to have as a niche, but they didn't diversify. Right. So right now their whole book is gone. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, uh, logistics, transportation, construction, all booming. Right. And, and by booming, I mean, we're probably helping them onboard 10 to 15 employees a week right now. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, they're, they're hiring, they're scaling. Great example in our market, someone that's relatable and very public, Brian with Junk King put up a post yesterday. He just added a new truck to his fleet. For sure. Right? So... In, in a down market where every, there's a lot of uncertainty, I think some people are figuring out how to pivot, monopolize, and go. And I think other people are still maybe trying to hope that things are going to go back to normal and they're not adjusting. What do you attribute that to? What do you think is the single cause of certain industries doing better and other industries not doing as well? I think it's product relevancy. I've been having this conversation a lot. Um, I think people... It, when everything's really hot, which it was, right? Biggest bull market ever. It, it's booming. Mm -hmm. It's product relevancy, right? In a market like that, all products relevant. Everybody has money. Everyone throws it everywhere. Everyone's giving and donating and nonprofits are booming and prices are high and everything's great. Everybody's when all that genius, settles, yeah. yeah, right? When it all settles and we start getting back to a true market, I think that's where you start to see weak businesses get cold out, which we hate to see, but it's just part of the process. And then you'll start to see your business has to change. Certain parts of your business are going to be relevant and other parts you're going to find aren't right. Sure. And you're going to have to figure out where's your margin, you know, and where was your margin before and where's your margin going to be because clients are going to purchase in different manners after this. So I Absolutely. think the ones that are thriving, they're in relevant industries that are still relevant. For sure. So I've studied about 33 recessions since 1850s, right? And based on what I understand, I want to take your uh, get your take on this as well. It seems like every time there's a recession, construction actually does a little bit better. And I'm not talking about housing construction. I'm talking about big construction, like freeways and so on and so forth. Do you think that's part of how the government functions to employ people that have been unemployed? Or what do you think is, uh, is it causing that? It, it's hard to answer it on that level, but I can answer it from a, a different perspective, but something that's relevant to all my clients. So most of my construction clients are residential, and what they're saying is they're seeing a similar shift when the market down last time to additions and remodels. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of new construction, right? Which is the shift you saw last time you saw the market shift from let's build houses to let me fix what I have. Right. For sure. And when everyone's stuck at home, a half, I would say half the people still have money. There's still equity in houses right now because the market's high still, right? The market's pretty much back to where it was. So there's equity interest rates are low. So I think some of those things are pushing people to reinvest. And that mm -hmm. may also push the, the real estate market because people have equity in houses now and interest rates are low. Sure. Um, I think government projects, I mean, they were already funded and they're already there. So again, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a relevancy where the demand's already there. Right. 
And now if there's more people available, maybe they can speed up the timeline because they had already allocated the funds. This is what I love about our, our country. This is such a good, wonderful country because having grown up in seven different countries and having been raised even in a third world country too, I can tell you firsthand, I love our recessions here, man, just because I was looking at our numbers because obviously everything seems like it's melting and the numbers that came out for first quarter, I said, uh, con end consumer consumption has been down seven and a half percent. And I'm thinking, wait, so 92 and a half percent is still intact? That's awesome. Great. That's wonderful, right? So when everything belts down, it's like, oh, dude, 20% of all our markets evaporated. So I'm thinking, wait, so 80% of people are still making money, right? Because what I'm used to is like 90% of people are screwed. Sorry, man. Like there's not even food on the table. Sorry, guys. A bunch of you guys are going to suffer tremendous, not even suffer. And I, I think even suffer is a soft word for it if you happen to be in a third world country, right? A lot of bad things happen. My father, when he was, uh, at some point he was in India and he was talking about how there's so much disease just on the streets. People live on the streets and they basically just are left out there just because it's not like the United States of America. You know, we don't have as many, uh, we have a lot more luxuries here than other places. So that's what I love. And guys, for you who are out there who are listening to this, this is not about scare tactics. This is not about putting more anxiety in you guys' head. This is about talking about what the problem is. And if I know what the danger is, then I can come up with a solution this is not about saying that oh, oh whoa, 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 there's a lion coming after us right but if i happen to know that there's a lion coming after us and i see it then i can go hide i can make sure i have my spear in hand i can make sure i have other strategies to help myself protect me and also on the flip side of this some of us are stronger hunters than other people so it's up to devin and i and up to devin me and you out there who are listening to this because majority of you guys happen to be leaders it's up to us to help turn the wheels of our economy right if everybody else is suffering and not, not not a whole lot of people, let's say, are in our fishing, small little fishing town, they're not fishing, but we happen to be better fisher people, fishermen or women, then it's up to us to make sure we catch more fish than we need so we can spread it around to other people. So, brother, tell me, based on your expertise, if you don't mind, let me actually maybe uh, divulge that a little bit more. I want you to talk a little bit about yourself so that way we can establish that credibility with our audience as well. So that way they understand the full extent of your background too. So that way they it stop, start listening to you when we get to the solution side. What's, where does your experience come from? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So I've been a serial entrepreneur since I could walk. Um, I always use the dog poop analogy because I think it's the funniest thing, right? I was the kid that for five bucks would go pick up dog poop in the neighbor's yard. And, you know, I learned that, you know, you work and you get paid. Yep. And, and that's, that's entrepreneurship at its core if you're controlling the environment, right? Totally. And, you know, so that turned into photography and, and I had a camera. How do you monetize that? And, you know, painting numbers on the curbs, right? If you live in a neighborhood that has curbs, I painted the numbers on them. And whatever I could do to hustle, I did. Well, I did that. I always had a full-time job. So Ooh. I understand both sides. I understand being an entrepreneur in the grind. And I also understand having a job. Right. Uh, outside of college, uh, I got into the marketing industry uh, my degrees in English and journalism, which has nothing to do with business, but what it te taught me was how to be a good writer and communicator. Mm -hmm. And I saw I could be a journalist and make, you know, 20, 30, 40 grand a year, or I could go into marketing and make five times that. So I went mm -hmm. into marketing. Um, I launched a company in Reno called Marky Biz. Uh, I had that company from 2012 to 2016. Mm -hmm. um, acquired a couple companies during that time and then sold to my partner that I acquired during the last, last purchase. Um, I then went into sales consulting and that morphed into, uh, basically a referral business. So my, my business is helping connect people and, and kind of monetizing some of that. Um, and then that led into BBSI, um, because I was referring business to BBSI and I liked the culture and the company. My clients never left. I heard good things. Um, and when the opportunity came up to, to take the branch over, you know, it functions like a franchise without the buy-in and it penciled out with my goals and missions of impacting small business. So mm -hmm. I made that decision. Um, during all of that time, uh, I was an owner of a manufacturing company. I had a co-working space that failed. Um, I've seen all the bad sides of it too. I've had partnerships go sideways. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of hands-on experience. And what I'm blessed for is the fact that, you know, in the marketing space and in the sales space, I worked with over 400 businesses Wow. from mom and pops to, you know, fortune 500 companies. 
So I got to see what works and what doesn't work at all levels in a lot of industries. So it was, you know, an MBA on steroids. And then I experienced, like I said, the, the good and the bad right. myself. You know, so it's very relatable for me to, to look at a business owner or someone who's in the entrepreneurship space and say, hey, here, here's what I know. And whether that applies to you or not, I don't know. But I know that I have some wisdom that if I can share it and it helps you, then that, that was worth my day. I, I love that, man. And I think the reason why I asked you to share your knowledge with our uh, on our podcast with people is because, number one, I respect your successes, especially because they came so early. You know, you're a very young gentleman, right? And as far as I'm concerned, anybody that has success early on, I want to pick your brain. I want to figure out what you're doing. The second thing is that I love people that do admit to their failures as well, because for me, if I want to learn from somebody, I want to look at somebody who has at least 50 fails. Because if you have 50 fails, you can tell me, hey, there's a ditch over there. Be careful. I've fallen into that, right? Be careful. <laughs> make sure you don't fall in that as well. I think sometimes when it comes to asking for people's advice, sometimes people look for like the people that brag about their successes. And for me, it's just, I found that no, no, no. I love the fact that you have successes, but I always want to get my advice from people that have also had failures. Because if you haven't had failures, there's a good chance that your successes could have been accidental too. Because we know there's a huge factor of luck. Kurt talked about this in one of our other podcasts as well. That um, you know, it, it, some of his success was actually in the beginning. It was just all luck, right? And we can't yep. deny that. We get to be lucky to live right here in America in 2020, not in 1850s. We don't happen to be in Libya or Syria or Congo, so that gives us a leg up. Now, as far as strategies go for a small businesses right now, I want to focus on a lot of micro businesses right now. So, for example, if you happen to be a hairstylist, if you happen to be a massage therapist, if you happen to be uh, an in individual of an insurance insurance broker or something like that, right? For these individuals, what are some of the things that you know for a fact could at least help them uh, get have an easier time through this process? Yeah, I mean, the hard part is certain things are, are doable and not, right? Some of those industries you can't even be open and others you can be. You know, I think my first advice is be creative. So I, I think that a lot of people might might hide, you know, like, let me just let me just curl up and wait. Sure. And I don't think that's the right attitude. I think that what you'll see on the back side of this is the ones who got creative early and figured out what can I do, right? And, and when I say creative, that could end up being a lot of things. I'll give you some examples. But, you know, you got to get creative early and you got to stay grinding it. Um, mm -hmm. I golfed yesterday with one of the top realtors in town and you know, it was awesome because that was his mentality. He's like, look, when everyone else is slowing down, I'm speeding up mm -hmm. because it means that there's a vacuum and I want to fill it and I want to be valuable when there's an opportunity because that's when that. other people aren't seeing it. Right. And you know, I think that's part of the creativity. So, you know, if you're a hairstylist, I, I can totally understand your frustration, right? I get it. I get that it's frustrating that the government's controlling your ability to work, right? But what are you going to do about it? Because that's the, that's the question, right? right? Okay, great. That's the reality. How are you going to react to it to generate revenue? Are you going to sell gift cards? Are you going to sell product? Are you going to home deliver product? Are you going to, you know, get on and create a bigger network by driving value and doing videos and education, which we've seen some people do, mm -hmm. um, you know, great couple great photographers in town did that. And I think they built great networks and they're starting to show, look, Absolutely. I can be valuable in other ways and I can grow my network. So when the market starts climbing back up and I start to figure out what's the new normal, I have more people to talk to. I've created more value and I'm still relevant. Right. Absolutely. And I, and I fear that the ones who have just tapped out and are waiting, you may not be relevant when this wakes back up. Oh, for sure. And here's what I would say, guys, if you happen to be in that category, we're not blaming you. It's a very much a biological answer. When you have a lot of anxiety, what do you want to do? We try to want to hide, right? For the past 200,000 years that we've been around as at least modern species of human beings, right, in our newest form, we, we've always done that, right? So it's not to dog on you. It's just what Devin is talking about is overcoming your natural instincts, realizing that, hey, I might be a hairstylist, but guess what? I can still teach. What he's saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Devin, you're saying that I don't have control over Governor Sisolak. I, I don't have control over the pandemic, but guess what I have control over? me i can start networking uh, today i have six, six podcasts uh scheduled back to back to back and i have two phone calls right 
I can't be meeting people face to face anymore, but guess what? I'm going to still continue doing what I'm having to do. Our entire business model shifted. We wanted to have a yacht party here in April or May, but obviously we can't have that anymore. So we're doing everything virtually. So I hundred percent agree with you. Now, are there specific things that you think people should stay away from during this time? Are there any kind of scams out there? Cause I saw a bunch of them. People were spreading this one thing around that I think was say claiming that, um, Trader Joe's was giving $250 gift cards and that happened to not necessarily be true. And we've actually been, um, unfortunately a recipient of a bunch of these, uh, things that, Hey, you we have a bunch of checks from you for the government that you haven't been collecting or as from time to time we get emails that have no bodies in them, but they say that, Oh, you got a voicemail, click on this, download this file so you can listen to the voicemail. And we've been avoiding those. Anything that you think people during this time should stay away from. Yeah. My number one recommendation here is, if you don't have trusted advisors, now is the time that you, that should have became very clear, right? So if you don't have a trusted insurance agent, attorney, CPA, accountant, um, I mean, just go down the list. If, if you don't have that trusted network, and, and then second, if you don't have the trusted peer advisors, right? So you and I and whoever else we network with, if you don't have those two groups, now is the time to get it because those are the people who should be validating those things. A great example, you know, the whole PPP scenario, mm -hmm. which is something that we have to deal with a lot because we do HR and payroll, right? So right. that's a huge conversation with our clients. There's a lot of scams out there and there's a lot of people getting frustrated because certain banks won't lend and this and that. And, and again, it comes back to the, okay, great. Are you going to complain that that bank didn't give you money or are you going to go find the money that you need it? Right. Sure. What, what mentality are you going to live in right now? And then how do we get going? So, you know, you have to verify everything. And I think you're right. I think there's a lot of scams right now. Um, you know, in a down market, people are being more opportunistic about taking advantage of people because there's fear. For sure. Um, and you just have to be more aware. We were on with the IT client of mine. We did a client round table and he was talking about, you know, Going virtual is great. He's like, but now you got to start figuring out, you know, all the scams and the phishing emails and all the sure. crap. And, and you got to be more aware today because people are trying to take advantage of everybody. There was a Facebook post. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was true or not, but it was talking about the old man who goes in and, you know, he's on the phone and he asked the lady, Hey, I need to take out 70 grand cash. And the older, gen the, the young gentleman next to him is like, what are you taking out 70 grand cash for? And the bank's allowing it to happen. And this guy pulls him aside and says, what are you doing? He's like, oh, well, someone said if I don't pay it, I'm in trouble with the IRS. And then the younger gentleman stepped up and said, hey, no, 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 don't take the money. This is crap. And they grabbed the phone and had a conversation with the person. They like, found out it was a scam, right? Dude, I get goosebumps hearing that. Woo! So, so again, I don't know if it was true, but I read the story and I was like, it's relatable, though. So I think part of it, it is you have to slow down and understand if it's too good to be true, it probably is, right? Mm -hmm. That's always true. Get rich quick doesn't exist. It takes work. No one got to the top by not working. Um, and then all the other stuff, verify, right? Ask sure. someone, For right? Sure. Ask someone. If it, if it sounds great, and, and there are some good opportunities out there that are popping up, right? Just ask. Just, you know, ask a friend, hey. This showed up. Does this seem right to you? Look, can I send this email to you? Will you just verify it before I get engaged? You know, so trust and verify and a couple other tips and tricks there. I love it. I, I work with Jared Clark as my CPA and I really like that guy just because he's very knowledgeable and he's, I'm always bouncing ideas off of him. I know Griffin, you and I's mutual friend too. He's also very on top of his game. And actually recently he started to post some more videos as far as explaining some of this stuff. And I really get a lot of value from that. Now for some of the little bit bigger businesses, somebody might say, Hey man, like I, I can't, I can't pivot quickly. I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 employees. I have a lot of overhead. For a little bit medium-sized businesses, what do you recommend there as far as a business strategy goes? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's still similar, right? Okay. Um, a tool that we use and talk about a lot, I think, is really relevant to this question. So we talk about the six pillars of business. Um, so often when we think about business, if I ask you how's business, typically you're going to give me an answer, right? And it's it's good, bad, busy, right? <laughs> right sure. Take your pick. It's right. usually some generic right. statement that summarizes your business. Right. And if you say bad, if you say good, and I start drilling in, I say, okay, so what's good mean? Well, revenue is great. Okay, perfect. If I say bad, it's like, well, my employees are a headache. Okay, great. All of those are such snapshots of the business. There's no 
holistic view, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole saying of, right, that 30,000 foot view, the helicopter, whatever analogy you want to use, right? You're not high enough up to see it. So we talk about the six pillars of business and how does that work and, and how do you analyze each, right? So how do you look at people and have a conversation on your staff and is your staff working? Are they laid off and you're having to pay them? Are you doing, you know, PPP and you're bringing them back to work, but there's no work for them, right? So mm-hmm. how do you navigate people? That's a whole category. Can you, you have to the six for me dynamic. so I can understand what those six are? Yeah, so it's people, process, product, finance, structure, and I'm missing one. Uh, I'll tell you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> say that one more time. You said people, process, product. Yeah, let me pull it up just so I make sure I'm using the right six. No, for sure. Um, and I love the fact that you have everything handy too because, guys, for those of you who are listening, our job is to give you the most accurate information that we have access to, right? It's not about us having everything memorized. Again, like you guys know me by now. We don't, we don't sit here as like the business moguls out here. No, we sit here as, as a couple of young cats who are just naturally very curious and we want to learn for ourselves. And as we try to learn ourselves, we want to spread that love and knowledge around. Yeah, and I'll send you this. Uh, I'll send you a screenshot of the the six pillars too, so you can share that. Sure. Um, so it's people, process, product, pipeline, finance, and structure. Got it. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So to answer your question with those those medium sized business or any business really, but for medium, it really starts to bring light to it. Mm-hmm. You cannot just look at your business as is it good, is it bad. Right. We recommend you have to look at all six. Right. So people again, analyze your staff process what's broken what's working what's going to change right so good example if you have to go virtual you have to change processes right you can't print docs and have folders everything has to go digital so now you have to store files you have to figure out how to do you know scanning on your phone whatever Mm -hmm. that looks like so that's a process change that you have to adapt product you we get back to that product relevancy you know when you talk about construction i'll use as an example right so you, you go what do you do well i'm a i'm in construction Okay, great. So are you commercial or residential? Oh, I do residential. Okay, great. Inside residential, do you do new home construction? Do you do residential developments? Do you do additions or do you do remodels? Oh, I do abatement. Oh, okay. Well, that's a whole nother category, right? So, so you have to get really specific on product. And I find that those medium businesses right, right now, that's where they struggle is they think their product is one thing and they don't realize their, their streams of revenue. Mm-hmm. So that's something you got to look at. Where's your money flowing? Where's it coming from? What's still working? What's not? If you're in plumbing, right, is the service industry dead or right. is it alive, right? And how do you adapt? If you look at pipeline, the reason we call it pipeline and not sales or transactions is pipeline is the whole view of your sales process, right? Mm-hmm. So what's working in the market and marketing side all the way through your sales process to close gives you a better snapshot of, you know, are buyers slowing down? Is the transaction time less? You know, what, what's changing there? Finance obviously got impacted. I will tell you that a lot of our clients are getting PPP money this week, mm-hmm. which is great to see. So it sounds like that second round has really hit a lot of those small, medium businesses, which is awesome. Good news. So yeah. what are you going to do with it? And are you tracking it? Do you understand how that money is supposed to be used? What you're going to have to pay back? Do you understand how your other debt's being impacted? And then structure is your organizational structure, which right now is being completely shaken up because as you lay off people and take, take away capacity, Your structure has to change. So that's my answer is you have to look at all six as it relates to your business. I don't have a specific answer. My answer is you need to stop. You need to slow down, get out of chaos, find some clarity in where you're actually living and get real with your business in a way that's not emotional, right? Everything right now feels emotional because you're getting hit left and right. You have to become factual so you can make decisions that are real. For sure. I love that, man. Every time I talk to military generals, especially if they're wartime military generals, they talk about the same thing. When there's chaos, when there's an attack, we need to step back at least for half a second, take a breather, look at the map, say, okay, where, where are the attacks coming from? Where are my ways of escaping, right? And how do I mitigate these risks that are ahead of me? And I love that. And you're absolutely right. No, no two businesses are the same. And you can't just say business is good or bad. I always jokingly say business, everything about my business is great except cash flow, right? But to your point, you have to look at the entire pipeline, right? Maybe your lead flow hasn't slowed down, but maybe it's your conversion rate. Maybe it's your closing ratio that's down. 
or maybe even beyond closing. Maybe you used to get a lot more referrals. Now you're not getting referrals. So identifying where exactly these uh, weak links are and addressing those, I think it's a wonderful thing. Any last thoughts for our audience? Because I know I've already taken up too much of your time. I want to be respectful to your time. I know you're a busy man. Any last thoughts for our audience? Anything you recommend they read? Anything you recommend them doing so that that way they can be prepared for whatever is to come? Yeah, the last thoughts right now, and this is the message we're pivoting to as a company. Um, now, now's the time if you don't have a reopening plan, um, you need to have one because there's things you need to be aware of, right? Whether you agree with PPE, so you agree with masks and gloves and thermometers and sanitizer, whether you agree or not, the government is going to set boundaries and mm -hmm. you're going to need to meet them in order to ramp back up. And if you haven't made decisions to purchase that stuff, you may, you're going to wait, right? There's a delay on all of it. So you're going to need to start getting creative now on how you start getting that stuff. And it, I'd rather you have it on hand now. I'd rather you have a, a ramp up strategy, a good, better, best, and have it now, right? Who are you going to bring back and when? How are you going to reopen? What's going to have to change? What's going to have to change with your cash flow? In your advisor sphere, who are you replacing and who do you need to know? Get all that done now because although in Nevada, right, we have to wait till May 15th for guidance and then the counties are going to do whatever they're going to do and provide some more strategic guidance. Now you're starting to see associations popping up and you know, the Cosmetology, Cosmetology Association came out yesterday with an announcement on how they're approaching it. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to see it. But don't wait for the answer because when they say, yes, you can open, but then give you a list of stuff to do, sure. Smart. if you're reacting, then you're still going to be two weeks delayed instead of going, I have all of it. Let me get back in my salon or my chiropractic center. Let me implement the stuff I know I'm going to need and let me get back to work. So start communicating with your fans and followers and clients now have dialogue with them. Um, you know, really good example my dentist is the best communicator i've seen to be honest it, it, i even sent her i called her and i said look this is amazing because they send text messages they said hey here's our reopening plan here's when you can schedule appointments we're going to reschedule in the order that you were booked from the cancellation date Love you know that. we're going to reach out now if you want to move up let me know blah 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 right we're extending hours so we create more capacity so it they're already reacting so that's my biggest takeaway is if you're not right now looking ahead you're already behind. And those of you who are still open, you need to stop for four seconds and realize it's not business as usual. It may feel like it and you may be busy, but you're kidding yourself. So slow down and understand what's changed and make sure that you're ready for what's coming. I love it, brother. It's absolutely brilliant. Have you ever taken an IQ test? I have not. I think you should, man. I, I, I would bet that your IQ is really high up there. You know, by now, like I talk to a lot of people and I say this from the bottom of my heart, you definitely stand out from a lot of the people that I talk to and no offense to anybody else because everybody's good at their job. But I, I have I have a feeling your IQ is really high up there. And I, I love the fact that I can stay in touch with you. Now, for other people who are benefiting a lot from your advice, if they want to get in touch with you, is there an easy way for them to do that? Yeah, if you to to be honest, I'm I don't hide. So if you just go on Google and Google Devin Sizemore Reno, uh, you can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Um, you'll probably stumble across the BBSI Reno page. It's not a great connection there, um, but my handle is DP Sizemore on every social platform. And Sizemore uh, so exactly how you you pronounce it, right? Yeah, so De it's my initials, Devin Patrick Sizemore. So DP and then Sizemore, exactly how it sounds. Um, connect with me on all the platforms. Shoot me messages. Um, if, my biggest thing right now is if you need connections, if you need anything, just ask. I'm happy to leverage my network. And Ash, I appreciate what you said, man. I'm only, I can only be intelligent because I surround myself by people who are really intelligent. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to have that sphere of influence who's pouring knowledge into you so that you can share it. I could not agree with you more. Guys, as you know, our number is 775-372-2008. If you have any questions or you can't find Devin for whatever reason, if your Google is broken, let me know. I'm happy <laughs> to put you in touch with him. 775-372-2008. Now, Devin, brother, I always ask this from every, every guest because you're volunteering all your information. I sincerely appreciate it. What can we do as a community or what can I do as an individual to show you my gratitude? Yeah, right now, um, you know, there, there's the, I'll, I'll give you the money answer and the hard answer, right? So 
The heart answer is support nonprofits. Uh, a lot of nonprofits right now are upside down because if they get grant funding or federal funding, it's very limited right now. Mm -hmm. So if you have the ability to give, please give. Um, I know there's small businesses that need that too, but I'm really worried about the nonprofits because we have to make sure they're supporting the people that they were supporting before. Sure. Um, so please give if you feel generous. I don't care where. Find the one that resonates with you. Call them and ask how you can help. Please do that. Um, on the money side, I mean, we do payroll processing. I'm going to give us a selfish plug. We have a really awesome launch coming out June 1st. Um, we have some great tech coming. We have the best team in town. I love my team and I'm proud of what they do. If you have questions, we're here. Um, and I still offer the same offer I've offered all the way through COVID. If you have questions about payroll processing, if you have questions about HR, if you have questions about risk and safety or questions about business, we're here and we're happy to help. Um, if we can drive value to you, great. If it makes sense to work together, fantastic. If not, I just want to help. I appreciate that. And Devin, I know you're very well connected. So guys, if you're listening to this, please, 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 for your own sake, get in touch with Devin. Even just a small little friendship, I, I promise you, it's going to go a long way. I've been a beneficiary of our relationship. So Devin, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much. Thanks, brother. Appreciate being here. You got it, man. Have a good day, okay? You too, man. Bye. Tribe, if you hear something from us that resonates with you, please share it with other people. Talk about it. Don't keep it just to yourself. Conversation creates more education. And also, always, always, always fact check everything you hear. So hopefully, this creates more education for you, more conversation. Talk to each other. Talk to your family. Talk to your friends about it. And we will see you next time.